Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be showing you guys a new build that you can go. This is a very, very cool build. It's Offlane Ogre Magi. Now, there's a lot of really interesting things about Offlane Ogre Magi that I wanna talk about here in today's video because I genuinely think this is one of the new most fun and impressive builds in Dota right now. And okay, let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game Leap website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. Starting off, a couple of things that I like to do. First off, I really like that I have a Pugna. This lane is extremely strong. And the reason why is what you do is you give attack speed, right? You give bonus attack speed to allies. And it's really good on these ranged heroes. Like, obviously it's good on Ogre too. But the thing is, if you're playing off lane, it's very hard to click anyone. Like, yeah, maybe you could click the carry, but it's a little bit difficult. And so a hero like Pugna, you just bloodlust the guy. He gets 7% movement speed and 30 attack speed. He's going to go from 330 to 353. So now no one can stick on top of him. And he's going to hit like a truck because of that bonus attack speed. If anyone actually tries to trade with him, he'll just be able to really route these auto attack and get aggressive. Now, in terms of Ogre Magi, what does this hero do well? What this hero does well is high damage, tanky. Uh, all of this strength gives me regen and it gives me mana regen. So how the hero works is you have a starting passive and for every point of strength, you get six max mana and a bit of mana regeneration. So you want to buy strength. And the reason why is this is going to turn into bracers and this is going to turn into soul ring and it gives me 82 damage. I have six armor, 82 damage and five base regen. This hero is heinously tanky and strong at level one. It's obscenely easy to play this hero in the early waves just because of the damage you have, which is why you don't even need your Q to secure the range. Now Pugna can do it for me, but like even here, look at this. This guy thinks he's going to get the range, but I can hit it so early to deny it because <laughs> I uh, rolled an 83 and we get it right as we can beat down this range creep. And then from there, all I'm really going to look to do in these early ways is continue to bloodlust my position four, who can use it to go crazy and trade very, very effectively. Right, continue to kite around the lane. And then for me, as I'm trading, it's the same thing, right? Eventually, I'll bloodlust myself. And when I bloodlust myself, I'm also going to hit like a truck, right? Because I'm going to give myself 40 attack speed, which is nearly two gloves of haste. It's it's insane. So from there in the leading stage, I'm just looking to deny as much as humanly possible, right? Using the high damage that you have, you want to be contesting almost every single CS. So what you're going to do is buy two bracers and usually six tangos to make sure you have enough sustain to literally contest every single possible creep, right? The bracers, when you complete both of them, which is usually going to be around level three, will put you up to about 100 damage. Now you heard that right, 100 damage. Now in terms of skill build, I thought the Slark would take his Q. Uh, I literally thought he wouldn't take Essence Shift in this lane because he's with an Earth Spirit 5, which is like horrible at trading. Because of that, I want to take my Q just so I could stun the Slark. Because if he can dispel Ignite, it's just a bad spell, right? It's not going to feel that good. But generally what I do is I max ignite. I went a weird build this game, right? I put two points in fire blast with the sole intent of harassing and catching out the slark, right? Otherwise I would be skilling up ignite and spamming it on the carry and the support. Also quick thing about how ignite works. This ability hits the person you cast it on and the closest next to unit. So best case scenario is you cast it on the enemy position one or five when they're next to their teammate. Right, if they're next to a creep, it's just gonna go on the creep. But yeah, eventually the Earth Spirit gives up because Pugna Ogre is absolute AIDS and Slark is horrible against this lane. To be fair, I would have dumpstered a PL, I would have dumpstered a Luna, I would have dumpstered a Faceless Void. Right, the Pugna Ogre lane is like insane because Bloodlusted Pugna is just absolutely ridiculous. And then my hero's base stats are just absurd, right? So you trade obscenely well. And yeah, I end up keeping the lane back here and yeah, they just give up. So that's the laning stage, that's the skill build. Then I'm gonna buy bracers. You can look at my inventory here. I'm gonna go bracers into boots into Midas. And this is what I do basically every single game. The Midas, uh, when you go it in this order, you're usually gonna complete it around when you hit level six. And that's huge and that's our next segment. So let's get into it. All right, so for anyone who doesn't know how Ogre works, your ulti gives you a 75% chance at level one to multicast items and spells. When you use it on your stun, it stuns twice. When you use it on ignite, it increases the amount of people it hits and it can stack on top of one person so it can double the duration. And in terms of items, right, it just doubles it. So with Midas, it gets 75%, right? And now we get double the gold, double the XP. And that's why it's so good on Ogre because it just helps you snowball like crazy, right? Uh, and, and most heroes I would not recommend rushing Midas, but heroes like Arc Warden and Ogre who literally get double the Midas, you know, it, it just makes the item worth it because typically Midas takes probably about 15 minutes. I think it's like 15 to 17 minutes to pay for itself. 
But on Ogre, first off, I like the attack speed and I'm going to go phase boots. I'll talk about why in a second, because I don't do this every game, actually. And then eventually I'll actually scale. And on top of that, at level 15, I have an 80 damage talent. So all the attack speed will come into play, right? I am going to actually click people because while well, I'm bloodlusting myself with attack speed, I'm slowing them, I'm stunning them. Uh, and eventually I'll have more items to stick on top of them. And you'll see that later. But yeah, from there, I'm looking to fight, right? With Maxing Knight, you're incredibly powerful. This ability does a ton of damage, especially if someone is isolated and it stacks on top of them. It will deal 800 damage, uh, which is pretty insane, right? So right here, unfortunately, I think I didn't get it. Yeah, so it only hit him once, but you'll see. It just kind of kicks him out of the lane. Now he's at a very uncomfortable HP. And this is what you want to do. Once you have Maxing Knight, you just want to pray it will stack on top of people and spam it, right? Tusk walks up. Unfortunately, it's a shield rune, but whatever. I'm just going to burn a shield rune. And anyone who comes to my lane, I'm going to nuke. The next thing we did here in this game is we actually smoked on mid. So we smoked from top to middle. The reason why is Ogre's probably biggest weakness is he jungles very poorly. So it's not like I can feel good about pushing in top and then like killing neutrals. It's just not good on this hero. But for the most part, you want to fight at this point of the game. Like, look how tanky I am. I have the safety bubble too. Right, completed my soul ring after the phase boots. I have safety bubble. I mean, I am so tanky. And so we're gonna beat this, this tusk to death. I mean, so the phase boots help a little bit with that. Fight breaks out and they don't really feel comfortable chasing, which I don't blame them. Also in terms of skill build, I'm gonna be maxing out my Q now, which is just good for the early game damage. Bloodlust is cool and all, but I think the Q is just more reliable early game. And you can use it to farm by popping Soul Ring and using Q on the large neutral creeps. But yeah, the reason why I like this build so much, this phase Bloodlust with, you know, all the stats is, look at this, I get Doom, like he pushes into me and I get Doom. And to be fair, maybe if Tusk hits a shard here, I could die. But I mean, I have Swap, I have Astral, and I have so much health. So of course I don't end up dying here. They couldn't get the jump. <laughs> and I can just like run forward here. You just be such a chat as we turn it around. So you can bait plays, right? Obviously you're going to be somewhat of a frontliner on this on this hero and yeah you just want to force these skirmishes so don't be afraid to walk up to towers and just click ignite on the first person you see it should always be your mentality it has such a high cast range and it's such a low committal spell it's a pretty short cooldown then at level 10 i'm going to take ignite dps at this point it does 500 damage if you just hit someone with it you can hit two people and you get it way more than that so like for instance here i think oh yeah this one doubled up yeah this one doubled up and this is why i tip him <laughs> because once you hit someone with the doubled up ignite right you'll see two of them fly at him Look, at it just, it lasts forever. Look at this guy's health. <laughs> Send him packing, even with six regen. He's just like half health. <laughs> it's such a great, I don't know. Obviously he'll heal it off, but now if they were to take a fight, he's in such an uncomfortable position because he could just die to another ignite. So that's always my mentality. If a fight was to break out, then he's in a horrible position. And then from there, guys, if the game slows down, I mean, it's whatever, right? Obviously I'm going to be top net worth partially because my lane was giga easy. I'm 4-0, but like, I mean, this hero just gets so much gold from Midas. It just gets so much gold. Now, in terms of items, I basically buy Shivas every game. I mean, this item is just so broken and it's obviously incredibly good on a hero like Ogre. The reason why is you definitely can get somewhat kited once your two nukes are down, once your two disables are down. And then of course, it's just, you know, AOE slow, AOE attack speed slow, magic amp with Ogre, you know, and all the magic damage I have on my team. Or it's, spe it's not even magic amp, it's spell amp, right? Yeah, it's spell amp, so like it works with Odie's Q. I mean, it's just too good, right? It's, it's just absolutely too good to have this item. Now next, I like to buy Eternal Shroud. It makes you tanky and you get a lot of strength, which gives you damage, so, and that makes you basically invincible with Shivas. This game, I decided to go BKB, which I do because I'm against Doom, and when you get Doomed, you can still use items, and BKB being the main one, and you can just walk off of Doom, so I can frontline against Doom if I buy BKB. And I look at this damage, guys. This hero is just an absolute chat at this point in the game, right? So we're taking the bot tower. We got Bloodlust, by the way. Eventually, I'll just be Bloodlusting to right-click cores. So I'm going to be giving my OD, probably myself. I give 100 attack speed, which is insane, right? It's pretty close to a moon shard. Uh, but for your teammates, you give them 75. So OD and Jug. And so Bloodlusting, both of them just enables them. Like Solar Crest plus Bloodlust is just so good with this OD, right? We can enable this guy so hard. But yeah, this play was pretty nuts. All right, this was pretty insane. So Invoker was split pushing us top and... Yeah, I can just chase him down with the Shivas. I have the damage. A couple nukes, just half health, right? I know this guy's pretty squishy, but still, now he's ignited, just taken out. Nearly solo killed him, right? He would have probably lived on like 300 health. And of course, that, like, this is not even keeping in mind that you can hit ignite on everyone and hit everyone with Shivas. All right, just a quick example. This is a bit of a side note, but it's a good thing to learn about Dota. This is why BKB is so good against Doom on these like frontline heroes. 
Because this guy clicks Doom and he's like, oh, we're going to get him, right? I'm a Slark here, but I can just click BKB. <laughs> and then, oh, we've kited out the Doom. I can click my Shivas as well. I can click my Phase Boots. So, like, Phase Boots BKB is just really good against Doom. It makes it very hard for him to actually feel good about Dooming me like that. Uh, and then, of course, we're just going to full heal with the Healing Ward. And now they've wasted their Doom. And one of the things that's nice about this hero and the reason why I recommend this build is because it's just easy to play. Like, let's be real. This is one of the most straightforward heroes you could play, right, as a core. You click your Shivas, you click your Phase, and then you button mash your two actives. Hopefully you're smart enough to click Bloodlust on the right-click cores. As we stun Tusk, that keeps him in position, we Bloodlust the OD, and then that person gets evaporated due to the stun plus attack speed combo. Next up, I decided a, a bit of an off build for what I typically do. Usually I go like Utility, so like Hex and uh, Go Shroud and just like Frontline, essentially. But I don't know, maybe this build is actually better. I go Harpoon this game, and it's pretty cool because you have, right, this 80 damage talent at 15. You have, of course, Bloodlust, uh, and then you have a 30 strength talent at 20. So yeah, you get even more damage just from your talents. You get 110 total. Of course, my neutral item is just, I don't know why I still have this thing. It's probably, I always forget to take the tier twos. I don't know why. Maybe someone else has this problem. I feel like it's not only me. There's no way it's only me. Maybe it's only me. I don't know. Yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm very, very strong. And the harpoon gives me a lot of health, a lot of stats. And I'm hitting for 300, of course. It's very easy to stick on top of people because I have multiple disables. As I'm just clubbing this tusk. I mean, every single hit doing 200. Keep in mind, he's got some sort of shield here. What is it? This guy just has another shield rune. Why does this guy always have a shield rune on Tusk? I, I would have done half his health just instantly. Like, this guy would literally be almost dead. I would have basically solo killed him. I mean, this this harpoon is... Okay, he would have been dead. Yeah, I mean, this harpoon's so good at killing supports like this. Unfortunately, he has just for some reason has a shield rune, but it's... I actually maybe think this build's better. Like, this BKB harpoon. Because you can you can actually just right-click people to death. Like, you become... You literally can scale. And I'm thinking Conda's probably good. Right, uh, that's that's like a bit of a mix item. You could probably with Conda, you could just go Abyssal, right? I mean, you could just buy a Daedalus. Like, I don't see why not. Maybe a Orchid is good. That's gonna be all for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned quite a bit. Hopefully you're inspired to try this build. It really is fun and it's good, easy. It's everything, honestly. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.